there has to be fitness form and there has to be tactical form obviously in cycling um as a triathlete you know if if you come into an event that you're underprepared for and and your form's average you will you will uh, actually perform very average mm. and and they're the examples that, that you know we want to keep stressing to people if you just keep building the preparation all the time you know as the period of time progresses you will be a better performing athlete because your form will be available to you more often than if you do the high and low type of training and when i say preparation i mean training what are you doing throughout the the 52 weeks of the year or the the two or three seasons that you're preparing for for the big event um your a race um we're not talking about winning all the time we're talking about you know age groupers who just want to improve and so this form of training where you're you're preparing yourself for the event um you know the more time you give yourself uh and the the more you can get yourself right under that 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 level where you need to step up and and as we know we've talked about many times form can only hang around for for possibly 3 to 6 weeks and we can't pinpoint that because every single person is different every single person responds differently to to form every every person has a bigger or smaller window than the next person so you know there's no general rule there so but you see the guys the examples are guys who who do the spring classics you, they disappear as soon as the spring classics are over in March, April, you don't see them for the re- the, the rest of April, May, uh, June, and then come July, they're in unbelievable form for the tour. And guys might start early spring classics in March and then disappear, and then they're ready for, you know, May for the Giro. Um, so this is no coincidence that, you know, the preparation and their timing is is everything. So, you know, we as everyday cyclists or triathletes or runners, we expect to be able to do this every weekend and get frustrated as to why I didn't perform well this week. Yeah. Jeez, I'm not going so well this week. But the expectation is that you should. Well, not even the pros have that expectation. You know, there's got to be periods where you have uh, building base um, preparation phase before you can get to your your a a race phase, mm-hmm. um, and I think I think the the big races are examples in the professional world. Whether it's you know a game of golf or tennis, um, you actually have to do a whole lot of things to get your form right, and one of them is to be consistent. And it was so interesting listening uh, last night to the commentary, and they interviewed Jan Fredino, and. The question was something like, what is the the key thing that you think that's enabled you to be such a good performer mm. over such a long period of time and dominate, mm. pretty much dominate the world of, of triathlon Ironman and 70.3? And he said, look, there's no secret, re- there's no secret recipe. I'm just damn consistent. I'm consistent in everything I do in my preparation and my um, my uh, actual racing. Um, you know, I'm boringly consistent in my race. Mm. I'm boringly consistent in my training. Mm. Um, you know, it's similar to what Monaghetti said when we interviewed him. Uh, what have you done special? I haven't done anything special. I've just been consistent. I've never missed sessions. I've never been injured. Um, I get myself ready, you know, for the peak races. Um, um, they understand what the preparation is in training and what it means to get yourself up for for your personal best attempt. And and it was great to hear Jan Fredino remind oh, – I was just gold. I thought, mm. you know, he's almost being paid to say, say this so that we can talk about it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, because it was exactly what the message is that we're trying to get across to the age grouper and, you know, the everyday athlete who just wants to – better version of what they were last year or two years ago or for some people they haven't done a race for 15 years and they want to see you know am i going to be worse 15 years later than i was as a 20 year old compared to a 35 year old and you know surprisingly they can be just as good or better if mm-hmm. if they actually do what yarn said and be boringly consistent you touched on a term there high and low kind of training where what are you doing for 52 weeks of the year and um what the type of training that's going to really not allow you to get into good form easily and be super um, 
uh, either inconsistent or unsure of the type or, or uncertain of the type of result you're going to get is if you're a high and low type trainer, meaning you go really hard for a patch for 12 weeks and then you completely disappear for another patch. And we see people do this towards events. You know, they've got an event 20 weeks away and so they do really hard program for 20 weeks. And then after that, they have three to five months off and undo all the hard work they did and they have to start from so far back again. Whereas the athlete that's just super consistent all year round and then decides to do a 20 week kind of step up program um, to their race is going to guarantee themselves uh, a better chance of getting a good result and being in form and they're le- at less risk of um, having an uncertain result in their, in their race. Yeah, the inconsistency in results um, always surprises people, but it never surprises me. And, and we've got examples of people who, you know, and they've got every right to do this. They, they contact, I've known them for years, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, I've trained them for years and they'll come off the program for, I just need to be off the program for, for eight to 10 weeks or 12 weeks. And, 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 you know, I'm saying, yeah, fine, absolutely. Take a break. That's great. Um, I actually encourage that if people want to do that, as long as you don't do nothing, as long as you do a preseason whilst you're off the program. And they're the things that I think that they're misunderstanding because they're doing the high low. They're training really well during the program and really, you know, putting in the time, the preparation, everything right and performing quite well, but never going to the next step. And the thing that's stopping them from continuing to improve and go to the next step is the fact that they go off the program and do basically stuff all and come back, say they left the program at 100% uh, in their fitness level and they come back and they're at 50%. By the time we get to their A race, they're at 90 or 95 or 100% again. Compared to the athlete who stays with the steady consistency of of a reduced load, a reduced intensity, but consistent. And he leaves his A race at 100%, just like the other example, and he falls back to 90 to 85% of his, of his levels that he was come A race. And then when he has to step up again, he's now at 105, 110, 115% of his fitness. And, and that person will continue to do that year after year, whereas the other person who comes on and off is going to stay the same athlete year in, year out, and wonder why they don't improve. Yeah. And it, it sounds easy when you put it like that, but but that's just examples of the people, you know, obviously the people who've stayed consistent over three, four, even five years of being on the program uh, actually doing better third year, fourth year, fifth year than they were in the first two or three years when they were training just as hard. But it was the, it was the period of the, of the low that they were getting wrong. And sometimes the period of the high, they were pushing too hard um, and actually causing themselves to have a low period because they were exhausted. Yeah. Whereas if you have that happy medium of consistency along your journey, week in, week out, month in, year in, year out, you just have that consistency in your, as we keep saying, you just sit your, your fitness simmering under the launch pad and to, until you're ready to, to launch into your serious uh, form building preparation. Um the results are absolutely obvious to me and it's a lesson that I think everybody needs to really adhere to. Um, and and if you just change your mindset to being the, you know, it's like the bipolar athlete, that's what we almost, you know, you, you're too high and then you're too low. Mm-hmm. You want to be an athlete that's, you know, and I say a lot, you know, everything in moderation is going to be better than everything in, in extreme because extreme is, um, you know, unsustainable action. Anything that you do extreme, you will not be able to sustain that for forever. And you need to be able to produce something that you could, you know, for example, nutrition, if you starve yourself to lose, to lose weight, that's unsustainable. Um, but if you do a balanced diet uh, that's got really wholesome, good nutritious food that is cutting out all the stuff that's causing you to put on weight, then you will have a balanced diet that you can sustain forever. Mm-hmm. Um, the training program is no different. And the minute you start thinking like that, then you will become a better athlete by sheer consistency alone and not by anything else. 